What's up nerds, welcome to Table Ready. My name is Noah and today we're gonna to be fixing lasers and feelings. Now to start off, I have to give credit where credit is due. This video is inspired by JFace Games. If you haven't seen his channel yet, go check it out. He is creating his own tabletop RPG and borrowing mechanics from different games and modifying them to fit his system. I think it's a really cool idea and he uses lasers and feelings as one of his examples. So go check him out right after you're done with this video. But for now, we are going to hop into this one page rule but for now, we are going to hop into Lasers and Feelings, the tabletop RPG with only one page of rules. And let me just say, less isn't always more. As you can see here, it starts off all on one page. There is character creation in one through four, a ship creation, which is done through the entire party. It gives you a breakdown of how you roll dice in the game. And then lastly, it gives some space for the DM to create the campaign for you. And all of this is done in a very uh, short-handed narrative style. This is much more of a narrative game than a mechanical game. And that's something I want to balance out a little bit too. Moving on, I actually think that the character creation is fantastic. You can choose your style. Maybe you want to be an alien or you want to be an android. You want to be heroic or savvy. These are just little hints at things that you can put on your character sheet, but you don't have to. You can also get more creative than that. And then of course there are roles like doctor, soldier, pilot. Now, the next thing needs a little bit more explaining, which is that you choose your number from two to five. Now there's only one stat in this game. It is lasers and feelings as a stat. Let me explain how this works. Let's say your lasers is over here and your feelings is over here. The reason I do that is lasers and feelings is an over under system depending on the number that you pick. So let's say you chose a four. In this over under system, you want to roll a four or under to succeed for lasers. And for feelings, you want to roll a four or above to succeed. So if the game master were to ask you to make a roll, let's say a lasers roll, which is typically hard skills, intellect based, colder skills, you would roll a d6 or multiple d6s, depending on the kind of advantage that you have. And you would want the number that you roll to be a four or lower. You want to roll under the number. The number of these d6 that you have under, like at your target number or lower, are successes, and those are all equal to or under the number. And on the other side of that, if he calls for a feelings roll, say charisma or intuition, then you are going to need to hit that four, five, six number. So a success for a feelings roll would be a failure for lasers rolls and vice versa. Now there are ways that you can get more dice by being an expert in whatever they're asking you to roll for or by getting aid from a teammate. And then the number of successes again will determine how much you succeed or how much you fail. And this is essentially how you play lasers and feelings. The rest of the game is narrative based and then you just have to make one of those rolls. Now here are my three major critiques of this game system. First is that it's much more of a one shot style tabletop RPG than it is any kind of extended play RPG. So we're gonna fix that. Second is limited stat variation. Let me explain. When you only have one stat, or I guess two that are in ratio to one another on a sliding scale, what inevitably could happen, what did happen to our game, is you have a table of four players. And each player selects a different laser feelings number, like so. And then the GM asked for a lasers based role. Who do you think is going to be the best at that Who's going to jump up for that roll? Well, the person with the five will. Why? Because their lasers roll will succeed across this whole range. They have more options than anyone else does. And likewise, who do you think is going to take up a feelings roll? 
Well, the person with the two, because they will likely succeed having the most options to succeed for feelings. What this ultimately does is it makes it a two-player game, because everyone in the middle gets lost unless you continually are asking for the entire group to make rolls, or if you split up the party. And lastly, there's no combat system, which just makes the game kind of flimsy and as a GM, you're just kind of lost at what to do when the players actually do encounter combatants. So I want to make it a little more country, and we will. So this is the system that I ended up landing on, and I think it actually works pretty well. We added some stats. Now, I borrowed some of these stats from JFace, but you can also add or create whatever stats you would like, as long as they're kind of dichotomous. The ones that I chose to use are uh, weapons and words, strong and quick, defender versus healer, smart versus sensing, repair and flying, and then leader versus helper. And this is great and all, but it only gives the illusion of variance so far, because imagine that player one just still maxes out this way, and then player two just selects the opposite, right? Now we have the same problem as we had before. So instead of just making it a clean choose whatever number you want, I figured we could get rid of the option for you to max out everything by having an AP system. Like, you have these attribute points and there's only 10 of them that you can select across all of your stats. You can add whatever stats you want or keep adding stats. Now, the more stats that you add, I would recommend adding like another attribute point per stat that you put out there, maybe two, and kind of see how that plays. By moving to a D8 based system, I've created a larger amount of variance for players to be able to move towards in one direction or the other. Let's start creating a character with this method, the D8 system with 10 attribute points. All players can still choose whatever they would like for their laser's feeling score, and this can be their overarching character demeanor, whether they are more rigid-minded or cold, or if they're more warm and feelings-based. So you could pick two, three, four, five, six, or seven. And again, it's going to be the same roll situation. The further you are away from one, the better you are at lasers. The further away you are from eight, the better you are at feelings. Let's just say this person is a little bit more lasers based than feeling. And then you decide on each stat which side of that center green line you want to be. So if you want to be on the weapon side or word side, because you're not going to add a point in one direction and then the other. It doesn't make any sense. So moving further away from weapons, you want to be good at weapons. We'll start off at a five there. You want to be better at defender, so we're going to give it more space. We'll start off with a five there. Also want to be that leader. And then we'll say that we want to, again, be quick, sensing, and let's say that we're going to be better at repair. That uses up six of our total points. Now that we only have four more points to customize, this actually will allow each character to only specialize in one, maybe two stats, giving a lot more room for other people to hop in to cover those other stats, creating a party of at least, at the very least, if you had straight min-maxers, three. And if people want a little more variance, then you're going to end up with four plus players if you want to cover everything. Let's say in this case, this person wants to spend two of their last four to max out their weapons. Well, now they only have two more. They can either max out another stat or just put two others on. Let's say they want one more in Defender Healer. And then let's do one in Repair. So you can already see how this can start to play into a narrative for your character. Let's say that your character used to be a soldier who has retired and since become a mechanic for the ship. Well, there you go. You have great weapons, some decent defending, and some repair skills. This leaves room for the other people in your party to fill the gaps that the one character doesn't. And even if a second character comes out and takes the exact opposite stats, well, you're still going to need some more room to cover those stats that haven't been covered yet. On to the combat system. What I have here is very simple. I don't want to overcomplicate it because the game is mostly narrative. I want to give all the players 10 HP. 
and I want all damage that's done to and from players to be based on the weapons attack. You make a weapons roll. If you don't succeed because you rolled into the feeling side, then the attack misses. If you do succeed because you rolled into the weapons section, you do whatever damage is on the dice. I like this because if the enemy were to roll max damage, the most that they could do is 7 HP of damage, and that's if they have a weapon stat that's maxed out. That gives the player 3 HP to dip, run, do whatever they need to do. So all attacks would be done with whatever your weapon stat is, meaning that everyone can do at least one damage if they roll into that laser side. Second, I want someone to be able to have defender as a skill. Once per round, you can roll your defender dice, and if you succeed, you can reduce the incoming damage by that much damage. And then third is healing. I don't know if I would like to allow healing to happen in combat or out of combat. I like the idea of having a healer be able to use their action to heal someone if they make the roll, but you would have to then count back the number of points that you succeed. So it's however many points away you are. So let's say that you have a point total, like you're at a five and you rolled an eight, you would get four on that heal because you have five, six, seven, eight. Does that make sense? And then of course it should be relatively easy for players to heal outside of combat, especially if they're back on their ship, they should be able to go to the med bay and just heal back up to full. As far as initiative goes, I figure that you can either theater of the mind it and alternate between NPCs and players, or use that strength quickness stat. Whoever has the highest quickness can go first, and if somebody ties, just let your players decide. Always in the advantage of your players. Now, before I wrap up, I just wanna say thank you to all my subscribers for being patient with me. I've been going through some not so mild health issues recently, so my uploads have been a little further and farther in between, but I'm gonna keep up with it. We're gonna keep going because I'm loving how quickly the channel is growing. We're this close to a thousand subscribers and when we get there, I want to do something cool. And for those of you who are new to the channel, if you like this video and want to see more things like this or watch me play solo D&D &D with ChatGPT as the DM, I think it's hilarious and really fun. So you can, you know, hit subscribe or if you don't like that level of commitment, make a mage hand out of the like button. Head to the comments to tell me what you think about my improved rule set for this game to make it something more crunchy and uh, meaty. Thank you guys for all your support. Thank you to everyone who gives on Patreon, buy me a coffee, and who will eventually give here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Catch you later. Peace.